Hi, and welcome to another one of my cyber security videos. Before I start, let me quickly tell you about my free guide called How to Get Into Cyber Security for Beginners, where I showcase my five must-know tips for anyone considering a career in cyber security. The link is in the description below. Okay, now let's get started. Authentication forms part of the AAA mantra used in security. This stands for Authentication, Authorization and Accounting. In this video I will focus on authentication. Authentication is the process of taking an identity and using some form of verification. The identity can be verified as being legitimate. The identity could be an ID like a username with the verification being a corresponding password, which together supports the verification. What are the three types of authentication? There are three types of authentication. These include something a person knows, something a person has, and something a person is. Something a person knows is commonly referred to as authentication by knowledge. Different types of examples for something a person knows includes a password, a PIN, combination numbers, for example for a lock, secret answers, for example a mother's maiden name. To authenticate a person by something they know is easily achieved and is probably the least expensive method of authentication, but used alone it doesn't really provide the securest methods of ensuring the identity involved is who they say they are. As the information involved, like passwords for example, could easily be hacked and used by someone else to impersonate the legitimate user. In an age where hacks and data breaches are commonplace, along with people using passwords which in themselves can be easily guessed, a better form of authentication is required. Something a person has is commonly referred to as authentication by ownership. Different types of something a person has includes swipe cards, unique tokens, keys, the commonest example of something a person has is a key. We all use keys in our lives to get, get into our homes, to open the doors to our cars, to start our car engines and so on. This piece of metal proves we have something at hand that we can use to verify we are allowed to access or use something. Unique tokens are generated by little devices which cleverly use the current time and a reference seed number from a central source to work out a unique token for the person at that particular time. Swipe cards can be used to make it easier to prove the identity of the cardholder so the person holding the access card can use it to swipe at an entry point like a barrier to get access. They don't need to prove to security every time they want access who they are as the swipe card itself is sufficient to prove their identity. Used alone, these methods of authentication won't necessarily mean the person is legitimately without access, as they may not be the actual owner of these authentication items. They may have a set of stolen car keys, or ones they found, if the legitimate owner had lost them, and armed with these keys, they can now open the car, car doors and get inside to start the engine using the key. Likewise, with access cards, most of these will have some form of chip inside, with a reference to the person whose card it is, but if the card is in the wrong hands, the access card isn't smart enough to know this. So anyone who has a swipe card can use it to get access, and so many people can be guilty of lending their swipe cards, especially when colleagues may have left theirs at home. The same holds true for the unique token devices, as by having the token generated for the time it's valid, means access is granted. Something a person is, is commonly referred to as authentication by characteristic. The characteristic is a physical characteristic which is unique to, unique to the person. Different types of something a person is includes fingerprints, retinal scans, face identification like face ID on smartphones. Fingerprints, retinal scans to face identification can be unique to all individuals. So by using these, the identity of a person can be verified. This type of physical characteristic verification is known as biometrics. Many access systems these days use fingerprint access, from a simple fingerprint access on smartphones to fingerprint readers to access secure locations. Whilst fingerprints and retinal scans are undeniably difficult to impersonate, checking them can be expensive as the technology involved isn't necessarily cheap, so many organisations simply won't use this form of authentication. 
The downside is the technology itself used for verification may not be foolproof. A Japanese cryptographer was able to create a fake finger using gelatin from sweets like gummy bears to fool fingerprint detectors. He was able to fool them four out of every five attempts, achieving an 80% success rate. The technology involved in checking biometrics is also expensive, so many organizations simply won't use this form of authentication. Strong authentication. To be able to perform strong authentication, at least two or all three of the authentication methods of something a person knows, something a person has, and something a person is must be used. Each method of authentication alone only pr proves the identity of the person as far as they have the correct authentication item, be it a password, a swipe card, to a fingerprint. But this may not actually belong to them and they may be trying to impersonate someone else. So any form of authentication to be strong, multiple factors must be used. So a person not only has to enter their password to prove their identity, but they also have to enter the unique token on the smart code device that's assigned to them. Thereby using something they know, the password and something they have, the smart token, to provide a stronger case for authentication. By using all three methods, where the person uses a swipe card that's assigned to them to enter an office building, they then use their password along with a fingerprint to log on to a computer system, will make a case for strong authentication. So even if the swipe card was used by someone else, this person wouldn't be able to get access to the computer system because they were missing two additional forms of authentication. The password, known only to the correct person, and the fingerprint, a characteristic of the, of the correct person. Strong authentication is also known as multi-factor authentication, MFA for short, which means identity verification has taken place using two or more methods of authentication. When two methods of authentication are used, the term two-factor authentication, 2FA, is commonly used instead of MFA, even though it's still a form of multi-factor authentication. Thanks for viewing this video. Don't forget I have a free guide called How to Get into Cybersecurity for Beginners where I showcase my five must-know tips for anyone considering a career in cybersecurity. The link is in the description below. Till the next time.